Welcome all, welcome all, welcome all to Just for Clicks. I am the host of the show, Michael Buckcaster. I'm joined today with Christopher Hill. Chris, how you doing today? I'm doing good, man. Ready to get my click on. Ready to get your click on. Just for you guys to right. know, this is a brand new podcast that uh, I'm hosting. We're going to mainly talk some sports here, and today we're going to talk some college pick'em sports. And uh, I am the king of the trolls. I am the king of the puns. I am the king of the awesome sound effects. So, <laughs> thank you, thank you, guys, thank you. Uh, so, welcome to the show, Chris. Uh, so, man, like I said here, like this is just this is just a show of a uh, raw and r- raw and uncut sports talk, and uh, it being Saturday, you know, uh, what it's week eleven in the college football season here. Uh, Things are starting. Things are starting to get hot. Things are starting to get hit. So let's just start with uh, with some pickums, Chris. Uh, m- me and you were kind of talking about this earlier, and uh, uh, we're just going to stick with the Power Five five conferences because uh, let's let's face it, no other conference matters. Who cares yeah, about no one... the Who cares about the AAC? Who cares about yeah. the Big East? Who cares no, about no one... Boise State? Nobody. So well, well, hold on, dude. Hold, hold on. on. Okay, hold on. Don't, hold on. Don't say that. Boise State pulled an upset last night. They beat Fresno State, who was ranked 23rd. So, so that puts them at 82nd in the year. Got it. I mean, but 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 still, <laughs> that that's an upset. That that <clears throat> that is an upset. But let's start with the uh, with the wood the with the woodpecker lips of all conferences. The best of the best. <laughs> the Big Twelve. Let's start with the Big you, Twelve, Chris. You you said Big Ten wrong, dude. You, I. You, you want wood? You want some woodpecker lips? It's a big no, twelve, son. Big twelve. <laughs> wood, woodpecker lips. Oh lord. The Big Twelve is the most underrated conference out there, and if you don't believe so, fight me. Eh, I don't know about underrated, dude. I, well, what the fuck happened to TCU this year, man? What's up with that? What? Well, uh, TCU was not supposed to be good. They, so they, 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 they were ranked to start the year. I believe they were ranked as high as 17th or 18th. To, they, yeah, they to, were up there. To start the year. But they lost everybody uh, coming back from last year's team. And uh, TCU has been historically – they've been a mediocre run-of-the-mill teams ever since they joined the – Big 12. They had that one good year when it was them, Baylor, and I believe Oklahoma was all tied for first was all tied for first first place and they all kind of beat up on on each other and they ended up knocking each other out of the playoffs and big bull bursts, but I mean ever since ever since that year they really haven't been a whole lot. So uh, yeah, they kind of I don't know why, man, but they kind of put them up on a pedestal before this year. And uh I don't I wasn't really buying the hype. I don't really ever buy the hype on TCU. Yeah, I mean it would it would have been awesome if you know they beat Ohio State, but they didn't. So, so I'm not a, not a big TCU fan. It is. Uh, we are in a day and age of what have you done for me lately? And they Pretty haven't much. done crap for us lately. Nope. So, well, Chris, let's just start with some pickums. You know. All right. Close and dear near near to my heart is Kansas State Wildcats. We are sucking this year. We are three and six. No, nope. and uh, we we play a Kansas Jayhawk team that's also three and six in the Sunflower Show Showdown. So I'm, I'm going to start 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 with you on this one. Kansas State versus Kansas. Uh, Kansas State is a ten and a half point uh, favorite on this one. So who do you got? Well, I'm taking Kansas State. I don't know about you. I don't know about Kansas State. I, I don't know about that ten and a half. So big guy. Easy. I don't. I'm not going to give them that much. I give them at least seven and a half, but I would still go Kansas State. Uh, and just, I mean, I, I, I'm going to clearly pick Kansas State as well. I, I will never pick, never pick against my boys unless I'm laying down some money. And then, you know, like you got to, you you you, you got to let let your head pick uh, the picks instead of your heart. But right, Bill Snyder has been at Kansas State since long as I can remember. Since before I yeah. was born, Kansas State, okay. Bill Snyder, and Kansas State. Recently, Bill Snyder has fell, has fallen off his rocker. He is not coaching okay. at practice. He is calling out players. He is being a dickhead. 
I was going to say, dude, word on the word on the street is uh, they're they're looking for a head coach. Is okay. that is well? So Bill Snyder re- retired for the first time back in two thousand four, two thousand five. I can't really remember for sure when he retired, and we hired a guy by the name of Ron Prince. Ron Prince was a local high school coach that led a local high school, Junction City High High School, to three or four national championships in five years, or a state or state championships in five years. Uh, the, he was a pro. He was a pro style offense of head coach coming into a system that. Uh, have you ever seen the Cats play, Chris? Yes, unfortunately, um, I, they run I, a I, horrible I, offense. It's a, it's it's a nasty uh, offense. I mean, it's freaking horrible. I mean, I can still remember when you guys handed us our ass in the Buffalo Wild Wings Bowl. That was when, when did y'all beat us? When did y'all beat Damn. Michigan in that bowl? That was like what five, six years ago, something like that. Uh, you're referring to us as Michigan. Yeah, when, uh, when Kansas, y'all beat us in like the Buffalo Wild Wings Bowl or something yeah, like that. Yeah, had to. I th- <sighs> want to say that was Snyder's fourth or fifth year back from his. You know his little retirement that he had, so that would have been 2013, 14 ish. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah. like 13, 14 ish. But and y'all, y'all played great that game. Y'all yeah, thoroughly, thoroughly handed it to us. Yeah, and then ever since, ever since then, you know, Bill Snyder has been kind of off of his, of his, you know, being, you know, I played for Coach Snyder, and either you love him or you hate him, and I, Bro. and like I love the guy, but lately this guy is a dick. I mean, calling players out for not like like one special teams play c- cost you the game. Come on, man. you cannot say that as a head coach. Like no, I mean, no, 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 no. It it can't ever just come down to one play, man. It's it's the whole four quarters. It's it can't just come down to one play. So, I mean, I, I can I can understand like him getting mad and, and calling a player out, you know, for like not putting forth as much effort as he right, should. But, right, right. <clears throat> But I mean, there's certain ways to do it. Uh, he probably, and I don't think he went about it the right way, not at all. Well, I was actually going to say this for a show on Monday or Tuesday, but 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 uh, since you brought up the idea of them shopping for a head for a head coach, uh, let me throw some knowledge at you real fast here, Chris, because like okay. I said, Kansas State is near and dear to to my heart, so. The, uh, Kansas State is is in a city called Manhattan, Kansas. Bill Snyder runs this town. We have a highway coming into into town called Bill Snyder F- Freeway. The stadium's called Bill Snyder Stadium. Bill Snyder owns the biggest house in Manhattan. Okay. So so he's so he's a baller. First he, off, he is a he he is a god among men in Manhattan. Kansas. He can he can take a shit, wrap it up, and sell it, and people would spend thousands of dollars for it. Yeah, I think I'm talking <laughs> to somebody right now that would pay thousands of dollars for no, it. No, see, and that is where you're wrong. I mean, I am off this Bill Snyder bandwagon, but the people of Manhattan are slowly starting to you know fall off as well. But when but when Bill but 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 when Bill Snyder retired the first time. They expected immediate national championship consistency from a new coach. Kansas State has never won a national championship. We've never been in a national cha- championship chip game. The closest we got to a national championship game was when we played Oregon in the Fiesta Bowl. And mm-hmm. Oregon wiped us like we were a junior high team. It was ridiculous. So, like... Any coach that comes into Manhattan, they need to take the take the town, take the college, take everybody by the horns, and, and be like, "Look, it's this is this is my way, and this is the only way it is going to be." Because, quite frankly, the old way is not working anymore. Out, right. out, I, out with the old, in with the new. And they're probably so. I mean, I don't want to say that they're so used to. Well, I mean, hell, Bill Snyder's been there since they practically built the place. So they're kind of, I mean, y'all are, the fans there are kind of used to, I guess, the team being run a certain way, one way. Right. It's, I don't know. I don't know if it's always the same. But, I mean, college football is just like NFL or any other sport. I mean, you can't rely on things that, 
worked 20 years ago. You know, you've got to you've got to change with the times, man. You Point have Kane. to change with the times. Point point case here. <clears throat> Oakland Raiders and John Gruden. Exactly, man. You've got to change with the times. You cannot rely on you you can't rely on shit that worked 10 years ago, man. Like cuz that's I mean 10 years in in any sport that's just that's too old, man. That's just too you're you, you've got to change with the times. You've got to. Or else you're I mean you're not if you're not changing you're you're falling behind pretty much. All right. So in the uh basically the toilet bowl toilet bowl of the All big uh, of the Big 12 conference this year, Kansas State versus Kansas. We both got Kansas State. Let's move on. Number nine, West Virginia, 7-1, taking on a TCU team that's 4-5. and five. The TCU that team that you just referred to about how overrated they they, they are. Who do you got? In super, this one, man? super overrated, dude. Will Greer is going to destroy TCU. I mean, this game's not even going to be close, man. I don't even – what's the what's the point spread on this game? Do you uh, know? 11 and a half. <clears throat> Eleven and a half West Virginia. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to give them at least seventeen and a half, and I'm taking West Virginia all day long. Yeah, West Virginia. Uh, what is the word? They are controlling their own destiny right there. They have to win out to get a chance at the college playoff, and yep. they are going to point. They're going to prove a point against TCU that that they deserve, in that, you know, in that Final Four. Uh, that was easy in that final four bid there. Uh, next up on the slot or on, on the docket, uh, five and three Iowa State ranked twenty second. Uh, actually, a pretty good Iowa State team versus a Baylor team that's, you know, they're mediocre. Five and four. Uh, Iowa State with a seventeen and a half point spread today. I mean, Ooh, man, that seventeen and a half points. Yeah. Um. I'd buy that for a dollar, man. I told you, I'm, I'm taking Iowa State over Baylor. Uh, so you would take Baylor with the points in, right? Yes. <clears throat> but you're taking Iowa State out, like, all right? And, man, yes. like, are we on the same wavelength today? I mean, like, I, I was hoping for, like, an argument, but, uh, dude, I, I'd have to say the same thing as you. I mean, 17 points in any matchup, unless you're Alabama, Give me the points and the team. Oh, yeah. So, oh, yeah. 100%. But speaking of Heisman candidates, Oklahoma, Murray, number six, take on rival Oklahoma State. 21 and a half point <laughs> spread on this one for Oklahoma. I mean, who do you got on this one? I think it's pretty obvious. Uh, it's It's got to be Oklahoma, man. <laughs> it's got to be. I mean, um, their quarterback. Uh, Murray, right? That, yeah, yeah, think? yep. Yeah, that guy's a stud. Um, and he's a professional baseball player. Yes, he is. Signed a and, like, six million dollar contract or, or something. Uh, yep. <clears throat> and um, I mean, this dude, I haven't seen him play a whole lot this year, but I've, I've caught him in a couple games. And yeah, man, this guy's the real deal. And uh, he is not going to have any problem beating a depleted and Shitty, let's face it, shitty Oklahoma State team. They, uh, man, that's one of them teams that I thought this year they were going to be, I mean, consistently good. I mean, I, I, I pegged them to be one of those teams that would be in the top 25 all year long, even with a loss or two. Right. They would have, but I mean, they just, I don't know what's going on with old Coach Gundy there, but he's, the wheels are kind of falling off there in, uh, at Oklahoma State, but he's not. I mean, they're just they're not as consistent as I thought they would be this year. They're kind of like TCU. Well, I don't want to say they're kind of like TCU, but they're almost like TCU. You know, they started – I believe they started the year ranked, lost a game or two, and just haven't been able to pick it up since then. Well, let me uh, um, vision my ender uh, Gundy here. He is no longer 40. He is an old man, and maybe it's time to get off the train. Well, what he needs to do, one of his problems is, man, he, he he keeps trying to bring the mullet back, and it's just not working. Yeah, it's it's not working. It was um, good for a couple of years, but come on, man. Yeah, man, the mullet's just not working. I don't think college ball is where the mullet belongs. <laughs> right. The mullet the mullet belongs at the racetrack on Sundays, man. That's that's where the mullet needs All to stay. All right. Speaking of where mullets belong, Texas number nineteen, Texas six and three, 
travels to Texas Tech. Uh, Texas is a one and a half point favorite. Man, who do you got? You know what? This is do it. This is my my do first. Do it. Well, I'm putting Texas on upset alert today. Do it. Yeah. My yeah. Man. I'm I, I'm putting Texas on upset alert. Um. I mean. Texas Tech, man, I don't know why, but they are, they seem to be one of those teams. They're, they're like a, a Mississippi State. They're shitty one year, and then the next year they're gangbusters. Right. Um, and I think, honestly, man, Texas is overrated. Texas is way overrated. Ooh, I mean, don't, they start, don't say that because they, 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 they did are, beat Oklahoma. They, they start, yeah, well, I mean, the sun shines on a dog's ass every once in a while. But, <laughs> in your but, uh, face, sucker! I mean, you start the season – Losing to a, I mean, let's face it, a not so great Maryland team, and I'm pretty sure Maryland beat them in in Texas. That was a home game for Texas, wasn't uh, it? I think it was at Maryland, but they beat them oh. pretty bad. And, and I mean, this is what the second year in a row that they've beat them. Sounds about handily. right. Yep. Yeah, beat them <gasps> handily. I mean, Texas is too inconsistent, man. They're one game. They just they look they look like. Louisville, you know, one game and then the next game they'll look great. You know, they'll play to the caliber, you know, of an Alabama or something like that. But they just they're they're too wishy washy, man. They're up and down and I'm I'm picking Texas Tech. And I would have to say the same thing. When you're traveling to Lubbock, yep. <clears throat> hostile environment. I'm not so sure if this is a rivalry game or not, but it's an interstate game. I mean it, and it's only a one and a half point uh, point spread. Give me Texas Tech at 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 home 100 percent of the time. I'm gonna say any kind of in-state, uh, you know, game is, is gonna be a rivalry. So uh, I think it's gonna be, yeah, hostile environment. It's in Lubbock, and I'm I'm taking the Red Raiders with this one by at least seven. Calling it now. Headshot. Calling it now at least seven. There you go. So so everybody call Vegas. Put your bets in. Texas Tech beats Texas by seven. Chris Hill, Reagan in the money, Reagan in the That's money. That's right. So That's right. If you, we go if from the, uh, with me. we all go from the Woodpecker Lips League to the uh, to a cow's ass league, the ACC. Uh, yeah, yeah, pretty pretty much a. Uh, I mean, let's let's kind of face it. It's Clemson it, and then everybody else. You pretty uh, much. I was I was gonna say, man, this is Clemson's conference. Uh, but uh, there were a, there were a couple games on Thursday night. You you did have Wake Forest upset a number fourteen ranked NC State, uh, yes. and then uh, last night you had <laughs> our uh, our hometown team Louisville get pretty get much demolished by Syracuse. Yeah. Uh, by, by Syracuse, man, by Syracuse, and don't get me wrong, Syracuse is a good football team. They're they're pretty decent this year, but they are ranked thirteenth. But uh, yeah, they're but, kind of I mean, on the outside look, looking in. But but any anytime Louisville loses, man, it it puts a smile on my face. Yeah. So thank you, Syracuse. I appreciate <laughs> it. Well, uh, uh, this first game now that, that we're going to talk about, man, it's a. Uh, it's a team that put a frown on a frown, frown on our face last Tuesday. The Duke Blue Devils versus uh, uh, North, North North Carolina. Uh, Duke is a ten point favorite in this game. Uh, who are you thinking you got this on? You know what? Just because they beat us in basketball the other night, I'm going to say fuck Duke. Go Tar Heels. Oh, okay, okay. So uh, I'm taking. I'll take North Carolina by. Three. Well, Chris, let me. Uh, let me. Uh, this is where we disagree. Fathom my inner Matthew Lau here. You see, oh shit, here we go. See your 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 pick there is like a Ohio State fan. They are oh. just they are just wrong, <laughs> my friend. You got to go Duke Blue Devils, man. Come on, like no. Duke at home with a ten point fa- fa- favorite. Give me Duke and the points. Like I mean, it, but- there's no doubt about it. Okay, if if Duke somehow magically puts Zion Williams in at running back, then yeah, I can see them having a chance. Uh, we'll see. Uh, we'll see at twelve twenty p.m. on the ACC Northeast Network. That's weird. <laughs> that I I guarantee you, I don't get that channel. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Move it on to the next one here. Six and three Virginia facing a Liberty team that's four and four. I don't know nothing about Liberty, so I'm going Virginia. Um, 
All I know about Liberty University is that they sponsor William Byron in the Cup Series. Uh, I didn't know that they even had a sports program and all that fancy stuff. So, um, I don't know anything about them, but we'll go Virginia. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I don't know, man. I, I, got, I got nothing on that one. I, I know yeah, nothing, I don't, I don't, nothing, nothing about that one. I have no kind of background uh, at all at Liberty University, so we'll go Virginia. Next one up, go kick. Virginia Tech Hokies versus Pittsburgh. Four and four Virginia Tech, five and four uh, Pitt. Uh, Pitt does have a three and a half point favorite in this one. Who are you thinking? Who are you thinking? Who are you thinking? Uh, I, dude, I'm not a fan of anything from Schittsburg, like at all. Um, I think the greatest thing to ever come out of there is what Dan Marino. <laughs> I mean that's that's pretty much it. Um, I don't see Pittsburgh beating Virginia Tech in this game. Wait, it's okay. Is it a home game for for Pittsburgh? I believe Pitt is at home. Yes. Yeah, it doesn't matter. They're still going to lose. <laughs> they're they're still going to lose. I'm taking I'm taking the Hokies over the Panthers. Yeah, once again, you're wrong again, man. Oh man, you're wrong on, again. Dude. I'm uh, always right. The Virginia Tech hasn't been good since they had Vicks on the team. You know, Michael Vick or Marcus Vick, they just they haven't been able to find that that magic since then. And uh, I don't find them finding magic against Pittsburgh either. Whether whether we like Pittsburgh or not, they always seem to be a pretty solid team. You know, you, you can always chalk them up for a good seven win win season. Always, they're sitting at five and four, so they got to win out to get seven wins. So, give me Pittsburgh. Well, you can have them. All right, and I'll take that money to the bank. Uh, money in the bank. And next up, ESPN ESPN two game, seven o'clock. The U versus the triple option of Georgia Tech. Man, who do you got on this one? <sighs> um, let's see. I don't like either team at all. Mm. Does, does Georgia Tech run the triple option every year? Like, is that like their mainstay? As far as long as I've been watching Georgia Tech or seeing Georgia Tech, they've run a, a triple option. So, so it's kind of like yeah. So it's kind of like watching Army play because that's basically all yep. Army does. They are the, the they're the, they're the same exact offense. Well, that triple option, if I mean, if they run it all game it's going to get to the point to where that defense is going to get tired and they're going to start right. chunking up some yards. They're going to start chunking up some yards. Um, I don't think Georgia Tech has – I'm shot. trying to think of the name of their quarterback, but I know he's like, he's not a household name. Um, a lot of people don't probably don't even know who he is. Right. Um, I, wa I, I watched a Georgia Tech game this year. Uh, who did they play? Who did they play? Who did they play? I think it was like Boston College. I think they play Boston College. And Boston College here lately has been a pretty decent, a pretty good football team. I'm actually going to put uh, – well, I'm sure we'll get to that Boston College-Clemson game yep. here in a little bit. But uh, and but they they play Boston College, I mean, fairly well. Um, and Boston College has had a top-five defense nationally, you know, for the past few years. I mean, yeah, Don Brown left, but the the Don Browns last year there, they were ranked number one nationally. Um, <clears throat> I think I think Georgia Tech, if they keep running, if they keep running that triple option, it's just going to get too hard to to stop that every play, every play. And I mean, when you run that option, and you get to the point to where you're you're taking up yards, and uh, you're getting eight men in the box. That might open up some play action stuff. They might catch a play or two, you know, deep um, and do something with that. So I'm I'm gonna take I'm gonna take Georgia Tech in this game. You know what, Chris? You have opened my eyes. I've opened your eyes. I was going Miami on this one, 100. percent After no hearing way. you given that explanation about the triple option, getting wore out, etc. How you defend the triple option is a is a uh, What's the word I'm looking for? It, it is a fund. You have to be fundamentally sound, 
and absolutely and 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 historically people at the u are not fundamentally sound give me georgia nope. tech give me georgia give tech. me we'll take georgia tech so these next two games are very very high profile games first one up you have number three notre dame nine and oh 16 point favorite versus florida state but listen here Notre Dame quarterback is ruled out for today's game. That doesn't matter. Who do you got? Does that does not matter, dude? They, Notre Dame could put fucking Stevie Wonder in at quarterback today, and they're still going to destroy Florida State. Florida, dude, Florida State is just—they're a dumpster fire. Oh, they are. My man Billy Hatton is not going to like that. You said that. Said, said. They are, man. They're a dumpster. They are. Like a, they're a dumpster fire. They are. They are. Them and Louisville, or that's the dumpster fire of the ACC. I mean, they – I hate to say this, man, but when Jimbo left and Jameis left and went to the NFL, I mean, and honestly, Jameis Winston wasn't even that great of a player. Um, what? It, yeah, no. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's been over I mean, you can stick – you, you could have stick, stuck a fork in Florida State after week two or three. I mean, it's – They've got years of rebuilding ahead of them, and they're they're garbage. Florida State is garbage. They're going to get manhandled by Notre Dame. I don't care if it's the seventh string no, quarterback no, they put in today. No. They could dude. They could call up Rudy Rudiger right now and throw him in at quarterback, and then Notre Dame, and it's it's still going to be a bloodbath, man. It's going to be bad. Football Jesus could come in and play quarterback. A nun. They could go find a nun and put her in at quarterback. And she is going to run it up on Florida State. Florida, it's it's over. This game's not even going to be close. Florida State will be lucky. Will be lucky to score ten points if that. This Notre Dame team is a very good team. Yes, they beat my Wolverines week one. Uh, they shouldn't have, but they did. Uh, they're a good football team. I hate saying that because I cannot stand Notre Dame. Cannot stand. Okay. But they are they're a good football team. And this right. this game's not even gonna be close, dude. You better pick Notre Dame. I pick Florida State. I've, I'm hanging I've up. heard this trash come out of your mouth long enough, Christopher Hill. Florida, Florida I've, State I've heard sucks, it, dude. I've heard it long enough. It's over. This is my upset pick of the week, Chris. Oh, upset you're pick of the week. Okay. How drunk are you right now? I dude, I'm drunk on Mountain Dew and high on, on high on life. All right. Yeah, you gotta be. All right. They're giving Notre Dame 16 points, or or they're giving Florida State 16 points, okay? Give me the points. Nope. It doesn't matter if you're, you know, when you lose a starting quarterback, you lose so much. That offense is so much centered around that quarterback, and I don't even know his name. I just re, I, I just seen him play a few games here or there, you know, uh, flipping through the channels, watching, you know, third – third fourth quarter whooping up that like whooping butt by then but when you lose a starting quarterback chris something happens your heart beats a little bit different they they need to be shocked back into place and florida state's going to shock them back into place florida state's going to shock the nation if you guys listen to rtf sports talk i said this notre dame is, is going to find their way out of the playoff and how you they do so? that and how and how do they do that? Florida State beats them. That's how they find themselves self self out. That's how Michigan gets in. That's how Oklahoma gets in to the hey, college Michigan, football players. Michigan's already in, baby. No, they're not. Oh, we're in. We're in like Flint, son. So upset pick of the week, the just for click special, Florida State over Notre Dame. Give me uh -uh. my money. Nope. All right, all right, all right. So. The game of the SEC, the game of the week in the SEC. You were just talking about this. Boston College, seven and two, ranked number seventeen, playing at home. ABC night game here, number two Clemson. Who do you got, man? Who do you, who do you got? Who do you got? All right. Well, this is my upset of the week. Oh. I'm taking Boston College at home over Clemson. So you? I don't. So you're I don't thinking, know why. I, Oh, I'm I'm thinking that Boston College beats them. I mean, look, they beat them outright, right? Oh yeah, okay. beats them outright. Um, I think Boston College has a better defense than Clemson. Has right. a way better defense than Clemson. Um, yes. Now, where they're going to struggle is offensively. They they don't have that prolific, high-powered offense. Um, 
you know that Clemson's got, but I don't I don't see any reason why Boston College their the, the defense can't handle them and take care of that. And I don't know, man. Like I can remember years and years and years ago. We'll, we'll go old school here to like my playing days forever ago when I don't know, man. But I mean, you you could probably shed a little light on this because you you're a, a, a high school football coach uh, and a defensive coach at that. When they when your defense is playing lights out, I mean, getting that off the other team's offense off the field quick, giving your offense a chance to to control the game, control time of possession, so on and so on. You kind of want to the the offense kind of I don't know rises to the occasion and, and tries to one up the defense and play a little harder. I think that's what's going to happen in this game. I think Boston College's defense is just going to ball out. They're going to control the line. They're, they're, the front four is good. They're going to take care of Clemson. I mean, I don't think Clemson's offensive line is that great. Um, the running game is eh, shoddy at times. But, I mean, anybody can put up 70 points on Louisville, you know, like they did. But I, I see I see Boston College's defense taking care of this game. And I don't know how much they're going to beat them by, though. Well, uh, what's the what's the spread? What are they giving Clemson? I know Clemson's the nineteen favorite. and they, a half points. Nineteen and a half. I don't see how it should be that much. Mm. See if it was more at like like seven and a half, eight, maybe, maybe. But I'm taking Boston College in the upset pick, pick of the week because Florida Florida State's not beating Notre Dame. We'll just it's not <laughs> happening. It's not going to happen. But I, I I will pick. I will put, I put my money on Boston College pulling the upset. And knocking Clemson off their high horse today. Okay, so I'm going to take everything that you, you you just said and play it in the other hand. Clemson's going to win this game, and they're going to win it soundly, 21, 28 points. Okay, you think so? so? I know so because when you have a defense that's playing like Boston College is, yes, they're yes they're yes they're playing well. They are a top ranked defense, et cetera, but their offense is horrible. Okay. So, coming from a high school team, that my defense was top ranked in the state. Our offense was horrible. Okay, any chance my offense did not score, that puts more pressure on my defense. Clemson's going to come out, score quick, and score often, and Boston College is just going to crumble because their offense is that bad, and their defense just cannot maintain that excellence for four quarters against a team like Clemson. They're, you know, they might, it is going to be a quick 14-0, uh, 14-7 first quarter. Boston College defense might hang on second, second, third, third, third quarter. Fourth quarter, they're going to run it up, and it's, it's, it's going to get ugly. So give me Clemson. Give me the points, too. What do you got to say about that? Nothing. I say I say you're wrong, dude. I'm not. <laughs> I don't. I, I mean, like, I just I want Clemson to lose, man. I just I want them to lose so bad. And I, I want Boston College. I, want I Boston would College love to no other than to see Clemson lose, to see Notre Dame lose, and to see like an Oklahoma lose, just to cause all type of, of chaos in that college fo- football playoff. But. I just don't think Boston College has it, like has what it takes to beat Clemson. So I think that defense does. We'll see today, man. Yeah. We will see today. Uh, if you guys aren't, follow me on Twitter, mbuck41 on the Twitter machines, and uh, I- I'll be tweeting throughout the game. Uh, you know, my wife's making me steak. I'm going to have a few brewskis, and we have a good time. So follow me on that Twitter machine. So the old tweets machine on the old Twitter machine. So let's oh, move yeah. on. To a fairly good conference, not as good as the Big Big Twelve, but if you subtract two, you, you get big. You get the Big Ten. And, Come on, uh, man. <laughs> there's a reason why they subtract two because they're second best. Yeah. Okay. Let's Your start with loose, uh, let's start with Illinois at Nebraska. Nebraska, seventeen and a half point favorite. Wow. Okay. Well, Nebraska's won. What one game this year? Two games. Two, two games. games. Two yep. two games. They've they've won two games this year, so they um <clears throat> they're bottom of the barrel in the Big Ten, which is kind of weird to say. I mean, it's Nebraska, right. you know, it's just it's Nebraska, but they're playing. 
another bottom of the barrel Big Ten team. I mean, Lovey Smith, yeah, did great things in the NFL, but man, when he got to Illinois, it's just it's kind of been a train wreck. He has not been able to re. I mean, he hasn't really rebuilt anything. Um, I think he's just playing out the uh, the the players that he has until he can get some of his recruits in there, but that's going to be another year or two. I mean, he didn't really inherit that great of a football team to begin with. Illinois has not been known to be great. Um, this is one of them. This is kind of a, a shoot them up game. Um, but just for history purposes, I'm, I'm going to take Notre Dame or not Notre Dame. I'm going to take Nebraska. I'm, I'm going to take Nebraska in this game. Uh, what, what was what was their points? What did they give in the Nebraska? Seventeen and a half. I'll I'll, I'll take that. that. That sounds about right. Wow. Uh, well, <coughs> I'm not going to offer much insight on this game. Uh, my uncle is a huge huge Nebraska fan, I, and I talk shit to him all like all like all like all the time about how horrible they are. But if you guys are not doing anything Saturday afternoon at noon when Nebraska versus Illinois comes on. Do yourself a favor. Do not turn on the Big Ten no, <laughs> network. Do not watch yeah. this game. Yeah, don't give them any rating. You want to? You want to go down to your local field, check out a bunch of fifth and sixth graders. They'll put on a better, better performance than than than, than like these two teams will. But so you'd rather watch like a sixth grade dodgeball game than this football game. One hundred percent. One. You know what? Yeah, I'm. Yeah, I, I could kind of agree with you there because the only Notre Dame or the only Nebraska game that I've caught this year was when Michigan manhandled them. I mean, other than that, I, who cares? That was easy. But for pick's sake, give me Huskers at home. Uh, but if we're going with the points, I'm going to have to take Illinois. Uh, I, I, I just don't see see Nebraska beating them by 18 points. Uh, I think they're mm. a little bit closer than that. Um, let's let's move on to the uh, next game here: Maryland versus Indiana. Indiana with a one and a half point favorite in t- today's game. Uh, no, 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 no. I'm not. Maryland, Maryland's gonna win this game. Um, I, dude, I'm gonna be honest with you, man. I kind of hate what's happened there at Maryland. Um, with their head coach situation and, and right. so on and so forth. DJ Durkin. That guy, <clears throat> he was the offensive coordinator at Michigan before he got the head coaching gig at uh, at Maryland. And when he was at Michigan, I mean, I, I love this guy. He's He is such a great offensive-minded coach, um, ran a great scheme, was a good guy. I mean, players would just relish about having the opportunity to play for this man. So whenever he got hired on at – Maryland, I was really excited for him. I was, I thought for sure he was going to get him, you know, a handful of some five star recruits, a handful of some four star recruits. He was going to make it. <clears throat> he was going to make recruiting in that area, you know, a lot different. I mean, because honestly, I mean, what you got Maryland, New Jersey, uh, you know, New York up there, you know, East Coast. You don't really hear of a lot of crazy awesome prolific players that come from that from from there but man i he could have easily picked up you know a, a couple hand a handful of uh, you know uh, five star recruits and something like that and built something there in maryland i mean uh we were just talking about how they beat texas two years in a row they have won some big games the past few years i just think dj got dealt a shitty hand that whole situation was just it was not good for him and I kind of saw it coming. I don't understand why they put him on a leave of absence and all that junk. They should have just – if they, they knew they were going to fire him to begin with. I think they did anyway. I don't know why they just let him stay in limbo like that. It wasn't really fair to him. Um, <clears throat> that team, that, that, that Maryland program was on the up and up, you know, and hiring DJ Durkin was one of the best things that they had did. I, I still – I hate that he got fired, man. Um they're going to be searching for I, – I think they have, what, an interim coach right now? Or was their offensive coordinator? I can't think of his name. Right. I can't off the top, off the, yeah, off the top of my head. So there's, they're still in, you know, 
the 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 scenario of trying to find a head coach. Um, so they probably don't have like a set. I don't know uh, offense scheme, defensive scheme, or whatever that they're running, but uh, they're a pretty good football team. I mean, they did beat Texas to start the year, so they should have absolutely no problem winning this game. Well, like I was thinking about not causing controversy on the show, but you know what? This is this is just for clicks, and this is the mind of Michael Bukaiser. And uh, and and uh, I have to ag- agree with you 100% about the firing of that coach. Yes, I'm sorry that that kid died. Yes, I'm sorry that you know there were racial slurs. You know, <laughs> saying saying that they're not good enough. Yada yada yada. But I did a motivational speak on my YouTube channel about this very about this very subject. Like me as a coach. I, you will never be good enough in my eyes. I, I will always set the bar higher and higher and higher because I want you to strive to 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 be better. And that's exactly what DJ Durkin was doing with these kids at uh, the university. And uh, and just to say that you know he didn't care, he didn't care about his co- like, like care about his kids, etc. <laughs> that is a load of crap. During oh, yeah. during football season. I seen my players more than I seen my own wife and kid. Like, you know, I I tre- I tremendously cared about, cared about these kids. I love these kids, and f- and for and f- and for people to say that, like, it, they they need to shut their mouths and understand how much time and effort goes into coaching football at any level: fifth grade, sixth right. grade, college, right. perf- professional. This right, man. and it's not, and it's not like it's not like every coach can keep tabs on every player. You know, right. I mean, that's why that's why they have trainers and right. you know, and other people on staff on coaching staffs. Man, I mean, it's he got the shit into the stick, man, and I hate it. I, I hope, I hope that he lands. I'd love to see him go back to to Michigan. I, I, I who who is our fucking offensive coordinator right now? Tom Drevno or something like that. I can't stand that guy. Our offensive scheme. Yes, this year it's a lot better than it was last year. <clears throat> Our offense was horrible. We had quarterback questions and, and stuff last year. Um, but this year, Coach Harbaugh has kind of taken over a little bit of the off, of, of the offensive scheme and calling some of the plays and stuff like that. But, man, I would love to see DJ go back to Michigan or land at, at a, a really good school. Um, I, dude, <clears throat> we were talking about this. At, yeah, I, I mean, seriously, Kansas we were State. talking about this. Yeah. We were, we were talking about this a couple weeks ago. Teams like Florida State, Kansas State, Kentucky. If Mark Stoops does leave, who are, who are we going to find? So on and so forth. I mean, we were dropping names like Les Miles and so on and so on and whatever. But DJ Durkin, man, I I love this guy. This dude, he is a great coach. He is an amazing football coach, and I hope he lands somewhere where he can show off his talents and, and just prove and, and pretty much be able to say, "Hmm, I told you so." You know? Yeah, and. uh just for that very reason, I will internally root against the Turpins every time they play. I want them to burn. I want them to crash and burn. I want them to lose every game by thirty to forty points. So I got to go with Indiana. Like, like oh. I want Indiana just to pound them into the ground, even though that will never have happen because Indiana just is just horrible. But right, I want to pick Indiana just just because I I want to root against Maryland every time I. Every chance I get from like here on out, <laughs> um, I could buy that man. Why not? <laughs> and uh, man, if you guys have not been watching TV in the last week or so, Fox has been hyping this game as a rivalry game all week. Michigan State versus Ohio State. Ohio, no, the- Ohio State is a three and a half point <clears throat> point favorite. Man, I like I kind of feel like I know what way you're going on this one, but let me. Hear I you. Uh, I. The battle of the states, huh? I um, I hate both these teams with a fiery, burning passion. Um, if there was an Ohio State and Michigan State fan lying on the ground and their gums were on fire, I would piss on their teeth. I mean, I just, I can't stand them, man. I, but for for argument's sake, <clears throat> oh man, my my dad is gonna hate me for this. I'll take Ohio State. The Ohio State. I'll, I'll take 
the oh. fuck eyes. Oh man. Yeah, yeah, oh. and whatever. Do, do some backflips. Yeah, they're, they're satellite. They're satellite in space right that now. One, man. They're, they're, uh, they're, they're, they're satellites in space right now, linking up and and kind of all kinds of crazy shit. Computer banks at NASA are kicking on because I'm picking Ohio State. But yeah, I'm I'm, I'm going to take Ohio State in this game. Um, well, <clears throat> do you want to know how Michigan can beat Ohio State this year, Chris? Mi- well, hey, we'll 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 get to that. This is Michigan State, Ohio State. We're talking about. Okay. I, well, I, I, this we'll, this is a prelude of what's going to happen. Okay, Michigan State is going to beat Ohio State today by okay. seven. Okay. Okay. You got you got the Spartans by seven. I got the Spartans I, by seven. Okay. Honestly, At that, that point, would not hurt my Urban, feelings. Anymore. Urban Meyer <clears throat> starts 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 to grab his chest. He's like, oh. I'm having those heart pains again, like I did, in, like I did in Florida. First of all, I was covering up a sexual assault and rape and, and like all that stuff earlier. Now I'm right. getting beat by by Michigan State, and I'm getting uh-huh. beat by Purdue or Northwestern or who whoever you lost to by forty points that last. Purdue. Uh, Urban Urban Meyer's chest is is it's getting tight. Ohio State fans are getting upset. They're like, man, we suck. We suck. Fools, you are like you're ranked tenth in the tenth in the nation, but give me Michigan State, give me the Spartans, man, give it to uh, me. I, I would be fine with Michigan State beating them. That's I, as long as they lose, I'm fine with that. But I just I don't see Michigan State. No, no, I don't. I don't. I don't see Michigan State beating Ohio State. <clears throat> I mean, I can't stand the Buckeyes. Uh, everybody knows this, but they. Uh, I think they'll show up today. And they'll they'll take care of Michigan State. Michigan State's overrated, man. They they have been overrated what? for years now. They have, man. I mean, yeah, they've beat us, you know, two of the last three years. So exactly, on, and so exactly. on, and so on. But yeah, they have. But man, they've that's really all they can hang their hat on. I mean, they're not winning Big Ten titles. They're not in the college football playoff. They're. I mean, when was the last time they were even ranked in the top five? I mean, it's or, or top ten for that matter. I mean, they're they're they will be next over. week when they beat Ohio State. Uh, if if they beat Ohio State today, uh, uh, they won't be in the top ten, but they'll easily jump to top fifteen. All right, so let's <clears throat> let's go ahead and get things rolling around here. My wife's calling me to check in on things here. Penn State, Wisconsin. Who do you got? Oh, I'm going upset. I will take Wisconsin over the Nittany Lions. Well, that's dumb. Penn State wins by seven. No way. Michigan at Rutgers. Who do you got? <laughs> this is going to be a bloodbath. Uh, you remember a few years ago we scored 11 touchdowns on them, being up 78 to nothing? Right. Yeah, it's going to be another one of them. <laughs> um, it, it is, dude. Our defense, which is ranked number one nationally again, is just playing lights out. Um, quarterback play is great. Uh, Shea Patterson is a beast. Uh, we did lose our second string quarterback on the very last play. Well, the last play that he was in, what Dylan McCaffrey, our second string running back or quarterback, um, broke a collarbone last week against Penn State, and I think he's out for the season, which is fine because um, we've. I mean, we were. It's kind of weird. This is kind of a weird year for us because we're loaded at quarterback. Uh, we got Shea. We got this. Uh, Milton is his last name. I can't think of his first name. He was a four-star recruit. Uh, I think he was like the second best spread offensive spread offense quarterback or whatever in last year's recruiting or some shit like that. Uh, something like that. But we're, we're pretty we're pretty well set at quarterback. Um, I mean, our running game is super strong right now. This game is not even. I mean, it's it's Rutgers. Uh, it's it's Rutgers, man. It, this this game's not even going to be close. It's going to be. A horrible bloodbath. It is a forty-point spread. Give me Rutgers with the points. Michigan is not beating Rutgers by by forty today. Michigan, Iowa, will, Iowa, North, Michigan, Northwestern. Iowa, Northwestern. Ooh. Well, I'll take the Hawkeyes. Hawkeyes with I'm, ten I'm and not, a half point favor here. Yeah, I'll take the Hawkeyes. North <clears throat> Northwestern has been a pretty solid team, but they've been up and down. It, yeah, man. It they, is. Yeah, it I, is. It is hard to it is hard to tell me what Northwestern team is is going to show up. Is it going to be the one that sh- that uh that that you know that that pulled that upset? That, I, can't, I can't think of who they beat. Uh, 
crap. Uh, was it Purdue? They they beat pretty bad. And then the hell, uh, they they almost beat us. I mean, yeah. they had us down seventeen nothing at halftime, so, man. I mean, and you're you're absolutely right. I was going to say the same thing, man. It's they're too up and down. Yeah. They're they're you know they're they're too up and down. You don't know what they're going to be week to week. You if you get lucky and call it right, you get lucky and call it right. Right. But I'm uh, I'm going to take Iowa. Uh, I, I'm going to have to go with Iowa too. Uh, Purdue, Minnesota. Uh, Purdue, baby. I dude, I'm have slightly jumped on the Purdue bandwagon. This was even before they beat Ohio State. Purdue right. has been a Purdue's been a, a fairly solid football team this year, and I think uh, they're young, man, and they're only going to lose maybe three or four, maybe five starters on offense and defense, yep. if that. So they're they're going to be a they're going to be a pretty good football team, man. Next year, watch out. Yeah, man, definitely. So moving on to the most overrated conference in the nation, the SEC. Um, uh, do you not agree with that? Uh, <laughs> it is. I mean, it is Alabama and everybody else. Alabama uh, has been carrying the SEC for how long? I mean, ten years. Yeah, exactly. But on, but honestly, man, I mean, you can't. I see. I hate saying this. I used to get in this argument with friends of mine all the time when I lived in Mississippi. Because that it's SEC country down there, and um, I've always been a Big Ten fan. I've always been a Michigan fan, and uh, yes, you know I, I love my Wildcats too. And yes, they are in the SEC, but you kind of can't really argue the numbers. I mean, um, look at teams that have won the national championship. If you put a list together of every national championship team from last year to you know the last ten, fifteen years, I mean it's. Nine times out of ten, it's going to be an SEC team, well, whether it be Al- actually, whether it be Alabama, actually, Chris, and LSU. What are you doing on What are you doing on Tuesday? Let's Let's talk about this on Tuesday night, and and we'll and we'll go by how biased people are for the SEC. Okay. 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 But let's get these picks in. Number eighteen, Florida, six and three, hosting a uh, South Carolina team, five and three, six point favorite for uh, Florida. Yeah, I'm taking. <sighs> I'll take Florida in this game. Um, I don't think South Carolina's got an answer for for uh, old Franks there at quarterback. So yeah, I don't. I don't. I'm gonna see South Carolina win in this game. And Florida re- remind me exactly of Northwestern here. So up and down. Which Florida team's gonna show up? Give me South Carolina in this one, man. Give me South Carolina. Vanderbilt, Missouri. Missouri's 16 point favorite. Who do you got? Wait, I, I didn't hear you. What? Vanderbilt versus Missouri. Ooh. Uh, I mean, come a on, dude. 16-point favorite. Yeah, Mizzou. I'll take Mizzou in the points. <clears throat> Playing Missouri back in the day, traveling to Columbia and Missouri, it is so hard. Like, I, yeah, I don't, man. Like, we- I don't know what it is What it is about the place. Like, I don't know what they put in the water and the food, but Missouri at home with a not very good Vanderbilt team. It's Missouri all day long. Oh, yeah. Ole Miss at Texas A&M. Texas A&M, 13-point favorite today. Yeah, I'll, I'll take A&M over Ole Miss. Um, I echo that. They're, a, A&M's hard to beat at home, dude. They are really hard to beat at home. 12th man. Oh, yeah. Uh, and then possibly, possibly the game of the week, Alabama-Mississippi State. Alabama's a 24-point favorite in this one. Yeah, um, dude, it's Alabama. I mean, it's, it's Alabama and the rest, right? Yep, pretty much. It's yeah. Alabama. Alabama is not gonna. They're not gonna have a hard game until they play Michigan for the national title, and then we'll see. the The only thing I can see that might trip up Alabama <laughs> is they have the East or the West locked. Georgia has the East locked, so they know they're playing Georgia. And that SEC championship game, so I can see them start 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 starting to peak up peak a little bit. Like, hey, what's what, what is Georgia doing over there? How like how can we stop them? But I mean, honestly, dude, really, if you think State, about I mean, it, yeah, that's not what happened. I mean, really, man, if you think about it, Alabama is locked to play in the SEC title game. Georgia is locked to play in the SEC title yeah, game. Alabama, Alabama could, Alabama could. 
sit every starter they've got, play third string, second string, whatever, even if they lose a game between now and the SEC title game, if they go into the SEC title game, manhandle Georgia, they're going to be in the college football playoff. I mean, it's Alabama. Uh, it's it's Alabama. They Alabama could probably lose every game for the rest of the season and still beat Georgia in the SEC title game and still make the college football playoff. I mean, it's possible. It's Alabama. But <clears throat> moving on to the next game, the battle of the barrel, as they're starting to call it here, <coughs> Kentucky versus Tennessee. Kentucky is a five point favorite today. Oh, cats all day, baby. Cat, uh, we we beat Tennessee handily today. Um, yeah, that, that's all I got to say. Tennessee's going down. I mean, playing in Knoxville is kind of like playing in Columbia and Missouri. It's, it's something about that water. I don't know what it is. If it's, if well, it's, it's because it's, of the bowl, if it's because of the no, cool I'll tell you what air it is. or what it is, but cats all day. No, I'll tell you what it is. It's it's Neyland Stadium, man. Um, that place, it holds, what, 98,000, almost 100,000 people. I believe it's the second biggest college football stadium. Only second to the big house because there's – Really, there's only one and only big house, but I, that stadium, man, I've I've been there, and it's um it's huge, and the atmosphere there is it's pretty crazy. I mean, you got a hundred thousand people sitting on top of you. It's it's pretty awesome. Right, and then the final pick 'em of today: Auburn versus Georgia. Georgia's a Ugh. fourteen point favorite. Hmm. You know what? I'm probably going to piss a lot of people off, but I'm going to say War Eagle. I'm taking Auburn in an upset over Georgia. But it really it doesn't matter because Georgia's still playing for the SEC title. Which um, they are. And well, I mean, yeah, that's, the, I mean, so that's, that's, kinda, the, that's the exact reason why I'm picking a War Eagle too because they're, 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 looking, for, they're looking past Auburn. They're looking past Georgia Tech. They're, right. They, they, uh, when, they beat, uh, when they beat Kentucky last week, their fans were saying, we want Bama. Yep. That game is four games away. They are looking yep. past all these teams. They're, they're going to slip, slip up, and Auburn is a team to slip them up. Yeah, I think I, I see Georgia kind of on cruise control, you know, kind of like what you just said. They're, they're looking past everybody else, and they're, they're looking to Alabama. Because, I, mean, like, I mean, face it, even if Georgia loses this game, Drops down, whatever, to whatever, uh, hell, out of the top ten. If they still come in to the SEC title game and manage to pull an upset and beat a top-ranked Alabama team, dude, that could pole vault them straight to the college football playoffs. Yeah. The, I mean, you, SEC you, championship you, is automatically and almost always. So. Basically. Yeah. I mean, you know, uh, SEC title, pretty much if you win the SEC title, you're going to make the college football playoffs. It's if you win a big, it could be. It's because it's, it's 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 because of the bias, but that's a story. I mean, I get that, but I mean, you could say the same thing about the Big Ten. If you win the Big Ten title, you're basically guaranteed a lock in a college football playoff. I not, mean, not, not this year, son. Not I, this I year. think so. I think so, man. Certain conferences, if you win certain conferences, and then yeah, you're guaranteed a spot, basically. Well, Chris, those are our pickums for today. We have the. Uh, Power Four conferences. I'm not going to do the Pac-12 because I know nothing about the Pac, back to back to Pac-12. I yeah, don't stay up till freaking two o'clock in the morning to watch Washington State versus Washington that crappy game. But no, yeah. who, who wants to watch them anyway? You know, <laughs> because let's face it, nobody from the Pac-12 is going to make it to the college playoff. I mean, nope. sorry, not going to happen. You're, you're right. None, none of them. But Chris, thank you for joining me on the first episode of uh, Just Click here. Uh, it's you know what, guys? It just, it just, it just, it's, it's, it's going to get better and better and better as I uh, hone in my skills of hosting a show solo here. And uh, Chris, how do you feel about coming on every Saturday morning and doing some pick of? Well, um, I'm, dude, I'm totally down to come on at any time and talk sports. Uh, you know that. Um, but I, I just so happened to get lucky today. My boss is out of town, and I was off this morning. So normally, dude, I work on uh, Saturday morning. So maybe we might have to come up with another time we'll if that's cool. We'll come up with we'll something. Come, well, yeah, we'll come up with something, man, because uh, I really enjoy doing this, man. Talking sports, uh, what's, what's not to like? Well, the only thing not to like is like a Cadillac on a cold morning. It's those nice cold seats on your butt. 
get oh, the car yeah. started, getting it nice and warm. That always oh, sucks. Yeah. But that's always fun, man. What are you talking about? <laughs> Scraping snow off the windshield? Come on, man. Right, Nothing yeah. beats that. Well, guys, join me tomorrow as I pick the NFL games. Might have a special guest, may not. Either way, it's going to be a good time. Join me. Just click Michael Buckheiser. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Mr. Chris Hill from Big Blue no problem, Breakdown. Buddy. What kids That's got, right, buddy? baby. Go Chiefs. Wait, go Cats. Yeah, it's college game day. Go Cats. <laughs> <laughs> All right.